Welcome to Nevada and Tobago to our News 4 report, a product of the Government Information Services Limited. I'm Nicola Barito. Let's take a look at the headlines. The signing of a MOU between Trinidad and Tobago and Canada promises both countries great mutual benefits. Minister of Housing and the Environment, the Honorable Rudal Munilal, urges Trinidadians and Tobagoans to go green. And the President of Trinidad and Tobago addresses the heart-wrenching topic of child abuse in the country. Thank you for joining us to our top story. Ties between this country and Canada have been once again strengthened. This comes following the signing of a Memorandum of Understanding, MOU, between the Government of Trinidad and Tobago and the Government of Canada, which according to both countries will have great mutual benefits. A Memorandum of Understanding between the Governments of Trinidad and Tobago and the Governments of Canada has been signed by the Honorable Carolyn Sipasad Bechan, Minister of Public Administration, and Mr. Luke Allery, the Regional Director for the Americas Canadian Commercial Corporation, on behalf of the Government of Canada. Public Administration Minister the Honorable Carolyn Sipasad Bechan says the MOU is intended to facilitate support from the Canadian Government of the renewal and modernization of the public service which is within the portfolio of the Ministry of Public Administration. The MOU is essential to supporting public sector modernization in Trinidad and Tobago. Today's ceremony is significant in that it affects and will impact upon the quality of services that the public service delivers and will continue to deliver to the people of Trinidad and Tobago. The Canadian government will help the ministry to mobilize assistance from Canadian firms to improve service delivery and the functioning of the human resource management systems within the public service. Regional Director for the Americas Canadian Commercial Corporation, Luke Allery, spoke of the benefits of the relationship both countries have enjoyed through their partnership. This follows years of collaboration between both nations as Trinidad and Tobago is celebrating some 50 years of diplomatic relations with Canada. He says the signing event will firmly ground the relationship between the two nations, both commercially and culturally. The effect of our work together is seen beyond the boundaries of our two countries. For example, virtual visitors now to the airport are now better able to understand Trinidadians through including through your One Book, One Community project. Uh, I myself was personally impressed with the access I achieved to your rich cultural heritage through this new portal. In fact, um, during this week I seized the opportunity to uh, purchase the book this year the stolen cascadura, which I take home for my teenagers to, uh, to read. Uh, cultural ties aside, our new MOU brings our relationships to the ne next level by working together in the area of public sector modernization. Canada, through the Canadian Commercial Corporation, will contribute to a stronger and more robust government of Trinidad and Tobago. Our long-standing collaboration will continue with the real benefits going to the citizens of this country. Areas of focus of the MOU include integrated service delivery policy and strategy development, governance organizational and legislative design, and service delivery architecture design. The public administration minister says the MOU signing comes at the ideal time. She explained the many benefits to be gained by Trinidad and Tobago. The Memorandum of Understanding between Trinidad and Tobago and Canada for public sector modernization in the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago is timely, as it will firstly provide an excellent opportunity for our two countries to deepen the excellent relationship that we have enjoyed over the past 50 years for another 50 years. So, secondly, to serve as a portal through which our public service can access the wide variety of expertise and experience of Canadian firms and professionals so that we can improve in a reasonable time frame the structures, the systems, and the processes that we use to provide services for our citizens. Canadian High Commissioner Her Excellency Karen L. Macdonald says the exchange of knowledge and experience and increased cooperation which will result from the signing will assist this country in improving its public service delivery capability. 
She is also expressing great joy in the healthy relationship enjoyed by both countries. I really want to commend you, Minister, for your leadership in driving this important initiative forward. I feel that we are lucky, lucky to have a willingness to work together in trade, political, defense, academic, and cultural spheres. Lucky to have an established relationship of trust between our two countries and lucky to have a shared interest in advancing collaboration, even as we celebrate 50 years of diplomatic relations this year. But as a wise person once said, the harder I work, the luckier I get. And I believe we have all worked very hard to get to where we are today. So what else can we wish for? Quite simply, 50 more years of collaboration between our two great nations. Vina Barth, News 4. The Environmental Management Authority held its biannual Greenleaf Awards at the Trinidad Hilton this week. The awards coincided with the World Environment Day, which is recognized on June 5th every year. Speaking at the awards, Minister of Housing Dr. the Honorable Rudal Munilal urged Trinidadians and Tobagonians to go green. The EMA's biennial Greenleaf Awards this year recognized projects which reflect sound green business practices, environmental sustainability, corporate responsibility and community involvement. Housing and Environment Minister Dr. Rudal Munilal spoke at the awards and conveyed the importance of going green. He explained, contrary to belief, it does contribute to real issues such as housing and the increased cost of food. The minister emphasized that going green is more than just planting a tree. The green economy is much more than planting a tree. When we reforest or promote sustainability, we are protecting not only our quality of life, but our future. Ironically, with the concept of the green economy, we are also creating real business opportunities. Minister Munilal said going green also contributed to sustainable development and poverty eradication, two things which he mentioned were critical to the People's Partnership's blueprint for national development. Today's concept of the green economy will be highlighted on the world stage. What is even more important is that it will be placed in the context of, of sustainable development and indeed poverty eradication. These two issues remain a priority for the government of Trinidad and Tobago and is a critical component to the People's Partnership Blueprint for National Development. As the partnership marks two years in office, the minister revealed the government has worked with the EMA in the implementation of various initiatives to inform and educate the public. The Noise Campaign 2011-2012, which was launched to build awareness of the chronic issue of noise in Trinidad and Tobago and to educate the national population of the EMA's role. The Green Business Forum magazine, another initiative of the EMA, was compiled which highlight proceedings of our business forum. We have also been promoting the environmentally sensitive areas by production and broadcasting of the various uh, sites in the River Swamp, for example, the Arab people, Aripo Savannah's documentary is one case in point. And of course, the Eco Song competition, where I think you will also witness later in the program the outcome of that. In short, the EMA has been finding new and innovative ways to communicate various aspects of conservation and sustainability. Gregory McBurney, News 4. News 4 continues after the break. Stay with us. Jason, I think I've seen some rain. Listen, D, that's going to be a serious shower. This rainy season will be hectic, you know. Potential flooding across Trinidad and Tobago. It's so important to have the information so we could be prepared and we could plan and put things in place to protect ourselves. That's why Jason and I found out some things that you can do to protect yourself and your family this rainy season. First plan of action is to not build your home or business too close to ravines, rivers or drains. Because when the heavy flooding occurs, they can wash away all your valuable property. Remember, rivers need a place to flow and over time, river banks widen naturally. So if you must, build a safe distance from the river. But at the end of the day, flooding 
takes place and if indeed you become a victim of flooding here is the hookup you need to contact your regional corporation or the odpm at 800 odpm great jason remember damages caused by flooding can be minimized so let's plan and prepare in order to safeguard our family our community and our country a message from the ministry of national security office of disaster preparedness and management Welcome back. His Excellency President George Maxwell Richards was just one of the many high-ranking officials present at the handing over ceremony of a drug rehabilitation center in Palo Seco this week. His Excellency, while speaking to the attendees, addressed the heart-wrenching topic of child abuse in our country. His Excellency President George Maxwell Richards is reminding women that it is their responsibility to protect their children from abuse. He made the statement while delivering the feature address at the handing over ceremony of the Women in Action for the Needy and Destitute Center in Beechwood, Palo Seco. The center was handed over to New Life Ministries and will house 30 women in need of drug rehabilitation. President Richard said children laws can only be effective if parents protect their children. They even turn a blind eye when the abuse extends to their helpless and vulnerable children with the lame excuse that they have to go nowhere, they have nowhere to go for shelter and they cannot survive otherwise. They are so influenced by fear that they are prepared to put up with abuse of themselves and of their children. No act of parliament will be effective if adults who have charge over children do not fulfill their responsibility of protecting them from other abusive adults. President Richards reminded citizens that turning a blind eye to abuse could cause someone's death. If members of communities do not alert welfare services and law enforcement agencies of cases of abuse, particularly in cases where victims are afraid to do so, we will continue to be bombarded with reports of domestic violence, some of it resulting in death. Also speaking at the event, local government minister Chandri Sharma had a word of encouragement and advice to similar NGOs as he assured them of the government's support. The government is committed to partnering with any organization that is doing good work. So if we do push up open doors and I think um, the fact that no ministry has already committed, of course, I have committed PSL to continue to lend support. Um, what I may wish to suggest is that uh, you consider meeting with the other similar bodies and meet with your Minister of Finance and let them know the importance of perhaps accommodating some funding in the next budget and in all budgets. Uh, I'm sure the Caribbean is a uh, similar organization so are beginning in the Caribbean. Um, the other international organizations in recent times have been paying a lot of focus in this area and want to help. Gregory McBurney, News 4. The St. James Community Improvement Committee celebrates its 12th anniversary of We Beat St. James Live from June 1st through June 9th this year. Now, the event paid homage to musicians, legends, Calypsonians, Denise Plummer and Trinidad Rio, as well as Panman Keith Simpson from the St. James Tripolians. Chairman of We Beat Committee, Earl Crosby, in launching this year's event said, it culminates so culminates in time for Jubilee Independence Celebrations. Sweet sounds of We Beat will bring the town of St. James to a climax of activity as your annual We Beat Festival kicked off its week-long events. This year festivities are fittingly themed as celebrating 50 years of red, white and black as it coincides with the country's Jubilee Independence Anniversary. Chairman of the 12-year event Earl Crosby and opening the St. James Music Festival said it was his organization's pleasure to celebrate alongside the nation. We Beat is a celebration 
of the people of St. James and indeed the people and culture of this nation. This year, we are in a predominantly festive mood as we celebrate the golden anniversary of Trinidad and Tobago's independence. Indeed, a celebration of red, white, and black. Today, June 1st, is also the 74th anniversary of the incorporation of St. James into the city of Port of Spain. The celebration is held annually in commemoration of the town's incorporation into the city of Port of Spain and is organized by the St. James Community Improvement Committee, an event which has become a permanent fixture on the local tourism calendar. We Beat was born out of the initiative of the St. James Renaissance Project. Our committee recognized the need for such an event to highlight St. James to the rest of the world and to showcase our talent and culture outside of the carnival season. This year's event saw the honoring and tribute to three of this country's musical legends, Calypsonians Denise Plummer, Trinidad Rio, as well as Panman Keith Simpson from the St. James Tripolians. In receiving the honor, Hummingbird medalist and Woman is Boss singer reminisced on growing up in St. James and how it shaped her life. My mother and father had four children. Every year I remember my parents placing us on the balcony wall to see the Jose coming up the main road. So the Jose drums and rhythms are deeply embedded in my soul even up to today. I am proud to be a St. James Young, but I never dreamed that I would stand out as an important or famous product of this wonderful, lively and productive city. Two new events have been added to this year's festival, a combined services career day and Hot Mouth Granny starring Nikki Crosby. All shows will take place at the St. James Amphitheatre, Western Main Road. Kimberly Ram Callowan, News 4. Sport is next, right after the break. Meet the Kisoons. It's Saturday, and everyone has to do their part to clean the house. Everything was flowing perfectly, until... Daddy, what are you doing? No. No. Don't let this no. happen to you. Pay your bill today. The Water and Sewage Authority of Trinidad and Tobago. Water security for every sector. Deliver it. Sustain it. The March Pass competition at the Ministry of National Security, Sports and Family Day is one of the most anticipated. And as you saw in the first and second routines in our series, the reputation is well earned. Today we bring the final part of that series. Here's the third place team, the Trinidad and Tobago Prison Service. Trinidad and Tobago Prison Service presents achievements from 1962 to present day. Oh, 
That was Prisons, the third place team at the Ministry of National Security, Sports and Family Day. To recap, in second place was the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service with 21st Century Policing. The winners for the fourth consecutive year was the Trinidad and Tobago Fire Service with their presentation, Love Conquers All. The Honorable Brigadier John Sandy, Minister of National Security, was most pleased. We ain't cutting out. News for Sports. When we come back, fulfilling the promise. Adults aren't the only ones who beat up on kids. Sometimes kids beat up on kids. Every child has the right to be protected from violence, abuse, and neglect. Because I shouldn't be afraid to go to school or play with my friends. Because no child should be hurt by adults or by other children. Because safety is my right. Stop the In our special feature fulfilling the promise, we highlight the initiatives and achievements of the government over its two years in office. At News 4, we have joined in that effort, and each day in our news package, we feature one of those highlights from the long and impressive list of milestones over the last 24 months. In this story, we look at the opening of the legal aid office in San Fernando. Let me therefore begin by thanking my cabinet colleague, the Honorable Minister of Justice, for his continued work to ensure that justice will indeed become more accessible to citizens here in our Southland. As some of you may recall, pillar number three of the People's Partnership Manifesto assured citizens of Trinidad and Tobago national and personal security, human security for peace and prosperity. In making this commitment, we assure that we will seek to transform the society to create a just and fair environment and reorganize the justice system and make interventions of a proactive and preventative nature. My friends, today we once again deliver on the commitments we made to you in bringing access to justice closer to you, the citizens. A moment ago, I referred to this occasion as being hosted with a sense of achievement. Why this sense of achievement? Many of you may recall that this very issue was raised when the Legal Aid Authority, the Legal Aid and Authority uh, Division was brought before the Joint Select Committee of Parliament in March of last year, in 2011. I see the Permanent Secretary shaking her head. Two very important issues were raised at that hearing. Firstly, access to legal aid. I expressed the view at that hearing of the Joint Select Committee that there was an urgent need to improve access 
and quality of legal aid in the Southland. That we are standing here today and opening this new office, not only a new office, but as we heard from the chairman this morning, but an office capable of offering services on par with the Port of Spain office, a mere nine months later means that you listened, this government listened, and responded to the plight of the citizens of the Southland. And for that, I think the Ministry of Justice deserves a round of applause. Well, that's how we wrap up this edition of our News for a Report, a product of the Government Information Services Limited. I'm Nicola Barito. Thank you for joining us.